journalist um, and, and the Andrew Bolt case, because we all know that Andrew Bolt's a shock jock. And um, some of the background material I was reading about racial vilification and the freedom of speech is inside. There is a distinction between um, being able to impart ideas, to share thoughts, to debate issues, and so on, regardless of whether they're um, you know, positive, negative, or offensive, or, or not offensive. And that's, that is the freedom of speech and the freedom of opinion. But the actions of shock jocks in themselves, um, and I'm sorry about being general about this, but the shock jocks are not journalists. They're not there to um, increase public awareness, to maintain a public debate and so on. They're there to antagonise, to aggravate issues, to um, not express their thoughts or their opinions, but in fact to incite um, reactions and, and so on. And um, I think we all would credit with Andrew Bolt as being, in that sense, uh, good at his profession. So, so, the, so the thing that I'm drawing a distinction on there is that first off is Andrew Bolt's not a journalist. Of course journalists should have licenses. Of course everybody should have the right to debate their issues and to share their issues and so on. Um, however offensive. In fact I quite enjoy it myself um, in, um, in encouraging people to sort of uh, bring the negative things that they might see about Aboriginal issues or so on. Uh, to, to allow me to exercise my mind over those things. So um, I think that we have to see the distinction. I go back to what I said in the opening part about the fact that when we look at freedoms, we have to look at all sorts of freedoms in there. We have to be proportional in terms of what is the offence, what is the damage, um, what are the other rights that are involved, and so on when we do that. And I think that um, Peter's already given a good example of how that was the case in in the um, Andrew Bolt case. Um, what surprises me um, is what actually goes on in our parliaments. Um, the people who are considering whether 18C should be in there or not. Um, if one parliamentarian got up and took, called a colleague across the floor an offensive name, they would be made to apologise immediately or uh, be suspended from the parliament. So inside the parliament they maintain these sort of standards about how they talk to each other, but then seem to be laissez-faire about how uh, society outside uh, should operate uh, in the whole thing. So for me, it's a question of, well, um, you know, when we're talking about freedom of speech and freedom of expression, in this case, I think the parliamentarians are concentrating on respect and dignity towards each other in how they operate, and fair enough. Um, but the same thing goes on in an open society as well. It's a case of, uh, you know, what's going on here? What is the discussion? Why is the discussion happening? Um, is it is it an open public debate, or is it in fact incitement? And um, in the Andrew Bell case, I don't. I think that the courts were, were dead right. I'd be very disappointed if um, any attempt is made to change this legislation to um, uh, alter the effect of that, that court case.